Hey guys, welcome to the InvestorBet NRL Grand Final Try Score Preview video. Got two Try Score bets that I'm placing for the NRL Grand Final, and I'm going to go through each one of those players and why I'm backing them using the statistics, using the trends, and using just overall how I think this game is going to be played out. So I'm going to break those down for you in this video. I'm also going to cover a number of other selections of players who are near the top of the market, who I think are chances of scoring tries, but I decided not to back them. I'm just going to go why I think they're potential try scorer bets that you could take as well in this game. But I'm going to keep it as two. Don't obviously recommend having too many try score bets. The total is currently uh, 40 and a half, I'm pretty sure, uh, was when I last looked. Yeah, so total 40 and a half. Uh, so a fairly low number compared to what we've seen overall this season, which means you don't want to get too carried away with too many try score bets. Uh, it's unlikely to be like a 50, 60, 70 kind of point scoring game. Like both of these sides, but especially the Storm, have been involved in multiple times this season. So some of the tools we use, we use from the NRL Bet Finders, uh, which I've built over the past 10 years or so. This year made them available for everybody to use. Um, but this is the matchup tab where we can see where sides rank in their tries for by position. So at fullback, the Storm score the sixth most tries in the league. Uh, through the right wing, the 11th most, right center, 10th most, and so on and so forth. Then we can match that up against where the opponent can seed their tries, so the opponent tries against. So for the Panthers in this case, they can seed uh, the seventh least tries through the fullback, second least tries through the right wing, and third least through the right center. So effectively what we're looking for is green numbers in this column, like you can see down here, and even a fourth in the left wing, and then red numbers in the opponent tries against because we want them to be poor uh, defensively in that position. And for the Panthers, the only real major position where they are poor is left wing and um, about league average at fullback. Most of the other positions you see second, third, second, uh, second or second, first, first, second. Um, and then same on the flip side for the Panthers, where they score the majority of their tries. You'll notice there's not a lot of positions where they are ranked high in the league. We've spoken about previously, if you watched uh, the grand final preview video, which has already been posted, or any of the other previews, something I've spoken about uh, numerous times throughout the season is Panthers' numbers this year are definitely not where they were at last year or the year before. So statistically wise they're not quite at the level they were at previously so definitely are relying on their experience and uh key playmakers to uh win this game and uh their fourth consecutive premiership and where the storm concede the majority of their tries uh the positions where they're poor right center left wing and other two main positions on um, their left edge defense and right edge defense mainly affected by both of those positions. Uh, the other tools we look at, uh, which players have been scoring tries throughout the season, uh, what percentage of games do they average scoring a try in, two tries and three tries. Uh, so these are all tools that you can use. If you want to use them next season, um, go join up to the NRL betting guide waitlist. That'll get you a preview of the season completely free and you'll be the first one to get it when it is released. And uh, there'll also be the option to join the bet finders for next season to make next year super profitable. If you realize by watching these videos of how much money you can actually make betting when you use statistics and information to make decisions as opposed to um, your gut feeling and instinct. Obviously, you want to use those things to your advantage when applicable, um, but you don't want to solely rely on it. If you can back up your decisions with tangible information, it's going to go a long way, especially if you document um, that and you keep track of what works, what doesn't work, um, it's going to really um, build you up a solid knowledge base um, for next season and the years and years to come following on from that. Uh, so we use this tool as well as uh, the other main ones. So getting into the try scorers, first thing I want to mention is they're both going to be on the Melbourne Storm. The reason being, uh, in my intention going into the game was to have one for the Storm and one for the Panthers. I found it really difficult to clearly identify a player I wanted to back for Penrith as a try scorer in this game. There were three that I really considered, but it's, it's, there weren't enough things lining up for me to make that decision and make them wor worthwhile backing them. Uh, so I decided um, just to go with the two Storm players that, um, in my opinion, are really, really stood out. So firstly, for Melbourne, 
Um, the key uh, position that stands out purely from a matchup perspective is the left wing. So Storm ranked fourth in this position through the left wing and try scored. And this is where uh, Penrith are the worst defensively um, across the field. Uh, Penrith conceded a try to the opponent left winger in seven of their eight games leading into the finals. Um, they didn't concede one against the Roosters or Sharks. So Tupo and Melissa Harlow didn't score uh, in the Roosters and Sharks games against them. However, uh, Xavier Coates, who plays the left wing for the Melbourne Storm, overall this season, he missed a number of games during the mid part of the year, but he scored 10 tries and scored in 53 percent of matches overall this season doesn't have the greatest record against uh the panthers however he didn't play in the game in round 24 which was this one here uh, he didn't play that game against them grant anderson who filled in as the left wing for that game he crossed for an early try i think it was in like the third or fourth minute and we did back him in that game um so sticking with coats here to score on the left wing uh, the other thing um, that really stands out as part of this play is that I'm expecting Melbourne to run a lot of their attack towards the left edge. The reason being is, well, firstly, um, this is where Penrith are worse defensively, so it makes sense for Melbourne to attack that side, and it's where they score a majority of their points. Their left edge is responsible for a lot more of their tries than their right edge. Then the other thing, which is something I forgot to mention, um, in the preview for the NRL Grand Final. Um, but as I said at the end of that video, if you have any questions about the game or you want to talk more about the game, send me a message on Instagram and we'll chat about it further. One of you guys mentioned uh, Nathan Cleary's shoulder injury, uh, which um, straight away I was like, damn, I forgot to mention that in the video. Um, so we'll talk about it now. So it's a really, really good point, Ray. So very late in the uh, Sharks-Panthers game, uh, Cleary was clutching at his left shoulder. And that's obviously been an issue, I think, for the past two seasons now, predominantly um, been an issue for Cleary. And he did miss a large part of this season with that injury. There's absolutely like no doubt in the world that Melbourne are going to be targeting that. Cleary defends on the right edge for Penrith. And for that reason, like you're just going to expect the Storm to be running a lot of their attack at that side. And if, you know, that shoulder's not 100%, Storm are going to find out about it. And with Coates playing on that left edge, that sets up uh, really well for him to uh, be in those positions uh, if there are line breaks made, looking for the offload, I'm um, like expecting line breaks like at the 40, 50 kind of mark midfield. And then uh, if the second rower, et cetera, makes that line break or the center, then Coates is there for the offload on the left wing to score that try. Obviously not to mention the fact that, you know, with don't really get as many outnumber plays like we saw last week. Sharks obviously made a lot of errors against Penrith, but... It's very difficult to get now number against Penrith and run around them, but definitely it is possible to do. Um, so there's obviously that option as well. So I feel like there's multiple ways that Coates could score a try in this game. And so uh, he's going to be the first bet on bet 365. He's about 220 in most places on bet 365. He's paying $2.25 to cross for a try. Um, so he's going to be the first selection uh, on the Storm side. And then the other player on the back for Melbourne is the fullback in Ryan Pappenhausen. Mentioned the fullback is the position where, um, another position where Penrith can see a fair few tries. At the start of the season, um, barely any fullback scored against them. But from round 11 onwards, um, they have conceded a lot of tries. So they played 17 games since then. I think my calculations are correct. And one thing for sure is they've conceded 10 tries to opponent fullbacks during that time, uh, including two of their past three games. Um, so they conceded uh, Tedesco scored a try against them in the Roosters game. And then the final game of the season, uh, the Golden uh, Gold Coast Titans, uh, Jaden Campbell scored a try against them playing fullback. Uh, Will Kennedy for the Sharks didn't score a try in their most recent game. But from, I think, on the overall records, if we bring this up, um, the Sharks scored the least number of tries to the fullback in the league. Um, so not really, um, wasn't even expected at all for Kennedy to score a try. Um, but Ryan Pappenhausen for the Storm, ranked sixth. And then uh, for him to score a try, we'll look at his overall trends. We'll notice here straight away, he has scored 13 tries overall this season, scored a double 
last week to put Melbourne through to the grand final against the Roosters and scored you know, a try of 53% of matches this season. Um, the thing that I really like about this is Melbourne have been scoring a lot of tries through their halves, so Munster and particularly Jerome Hughes over recent tries. He's had two hat-tricks over the past three games, but the Panthers and the number two defense are conceding tries to opponent halves. However, that doesn't mean, like, for those players to score tries, they're making line breaks. However, Penrith are really good at shutting those down, but if and I think there's going to be a focus for the Panthers on shutting down Munster and Hughes, that's for sure, in this game. But that's not going to stop them from making line breaks. And even if like they make just half a break, the player that's going to be backing up, ready for the offload, is Pappenhausen coming through as the fullback. Same goes if they are making line breaks on that left edge, uh, where Clear is defend defending if that shoulder is a problem. Then uh, Pappenhausen will be that other player there, backing up, ready for the offload. So uh, you'll have him more so closer to the middle of the field as the backup if they're making a break on the left edge. And then we'll have Coates out to the wing if they make the break um, through that left edge. So I think this sets up really well, um, having both of those players. There's the chance both of them score. If one of them scores, we profit back each player to win one and a half units. Um, so allocate your staking based off of that. Uh, for Pappenhausen to score a try, he's paying $2.70. Uh, on Bet365. Definitely shop around. Generally, majority of the time, Bet365 is the best odds for the try scorers. Um, Pappenhausen, uh, overall this season, he had a little bit of a lean patch uh, between rounds 24 and week one of the finals, uh, but majority of games this season, he has scored a try. The other players um, that I did look at closely and just want to touch on, uh, particularly from the Panthers side, is... Um, I think Penrith will do the majority of their attack towards the right edge. And the reason why I believe that is going to be the case is last time they played Melbourne, which was round 24, Penrith scored four tries. Three of those were over on the right edge. The one on the left edge was through a kick where Dylan Edwards scored. So they previously had success targeting the right edge. And I think that's going to be the case again for this game. You have Toho on the right wing and then Isaac Toho are playing right center, potentially considered a play on either of those players, half staking both, because I feel like either one of them could score and don't have a strong lean towards either player. Like the tricky thing with this matchup is no player really has a good record either against this opposition. Uh, Brian Toho um, hasn't scored in both games this season, but last year uh, scored six tries across three games against Melbourne. So he was very good last year. Penrith, Attack hasn't been quite as good this season against Melbourne. They obviously didn't score in round one uh, the, and the four tries in round 24. He wasn't able to cross for one of them. Uh, Isaac Taho did cross for one. Um, so he's another potential option. Uh, but I don't think there's a great deal of value in the price. If you're interested in backing Taho, then uh, the 220 compared to the dollar 70 that I've seen floating around other places is definitely like, the way you want to go if you can get on on bet 365. Um, to Ruver at 240 is obviously a chance of scoring, but I don't think um, it's a very good bet. Uh, he's been one of the leading try scorers for the Panthers overall this season. Uh, scored 16 total tries, 41%. Uh, the thing with Taruva, he either scores no tries or scores two tries. You'll notice uh, scored a double in round 23 and round 26. Um, but aside from that, since round 21, hasn't scored a try. Had another double in round 14, round 7, 3 in round 4, and 2 in round 1. Um, so he almost, 27% uh, of his games, he scores 2 plus tries, only 41% with 1 plus try. Uh, so he, like it's kind of double or nothing, just about hitting that at almost the same rate. Um, but I don't think he's the best option. Um, doesn't have a great record at all against uh, the Melbourne Storm. He's scoring one try in his past five games against them. Um, they should be able to um, shut him down. And as I said, I think Penrith will do majority of their attacking towards that right edge. So I'd be more so targeting those players um, as the potential bets. That pretty much covers it. This is the last try scorer. Um, prediction video of the year. There's something I started, I think it was round 19. Uh, we started this, I really enjoyed um, breaking down the try scorers each week. So I'm going to bring it back next year. So make sure um, that you're subscribed, you've got notifications on. So when we start these up next year, you don't miss them. 
Um, other things coming up, obviously the preview for the game, who I think is going to win and why, and how I think the game is going to be played out. Um, that's already posted. Definitely watch that video if you haven't already. Um, other big things coming up, we've got the NFL um, it's into week five. Week five kicks off tomorrow morning, so uh, Friday morning here in Australia, and then majority games. This is a Sunday night game this week, and the majority games on Monday. I've been posting previews of the NFL on the US Investor Bet channel. Uh, definitely check that out if you're interested in betting on US sports. I'm going to be talking about the NBA on there as well. Uh, we'll be doing previews and breakdowns for NBA games. So make sure you subscribe to that channel if you like betting on the U.S. sports. Uh, other things, we got horse racing Friday night, Saturday, and Monday this week. Um, so that's part of the racing show where I post all my horse racing bets. I'll put the link to the description in that uh, for the racing show if you're interested in betting on horse racing, especially during uh, the off-season of the NRL Uh Horse racing is the best thing you can bet on to build up your betting bankroll, have more money to bet on on the NRL next season. And in my opinion, you want to bet on horse racing all year round because it's the most profitable thing, has the most mistakes, like the amount of times you can find horses at $250 that should be $2, $3, that should be $250, $220. Uh, it's really, really unbelievable. And we bet the day before, so you can lock in the bets the day prior before race day. So you don't need to sit, you know, at home all day on a Saturday trying to put bets on the horses or, you know, be have your head in your phone. You can lock all your bets in. Uh, I think for most people, it doesn't take longer than 10 minutes to put all the bets on. Maybe 15 if you're a bit slower, <laughs> but uh, it's very, very easy to follow along. So definitely give that a try if you're interested in horse racing and you want to make money betting on it. Uh, in the horse racing show, I record videos just like this, breaking down the races, why I think certain horses are going to win. Um, I might put out a preview of the group one this week, uh, tomorrow. So it's, um, keep an eye on the channel if that I get time to post that um, amongst getting all the plays out for the members. So uh, that being said, uh, biggest thing, I really appreciate you guys uh, supporting the channel, watching these videos. Uh, hopefully they've been really helpful uh, for you in betting on the NRL this season, building those strategies of how you're choosing your bets. That's why I aim to do it. And uh, we'll continue on doing it next year. So thanks guys for watching. Uh, good luck on the NRL Grand Final with your bets. <laughs>